looking for mysteries right now. I, I am too. For, for mysteries, I mean. You're... what? <laughs> What is up ladies and gentlemen, I am the Story Driven Gamer and welcome back to the channel. Today we are hopping back into Rain Code. I'm not exaggerating when I say I have been thinking of nothing else but this game all day. I mean it's not entirely true. Obviously I've thought of other things, but this game has been high on my mind, even at work. It was a slow day, so I had time to just I had downtime to just think about the case while I was working. You know, the investigation we uh underwent last episode. I haven't come up with any, like, you know, big brain theories as to, like, what's going on. I'm still very lost. <laughs> At least when it comes to the grand scheme of things, but I thought through some of my, some of my theories I've, co I've come up with. Even the ones that I, uh, talked, I already mentioned in the last episode, and, um, yeah, I actually wrote them down. I came home from work and, and wrote down what, <laughs> some of the stuff I came up with, which I haven't done for any other game, even the Phoenix Wright games. So I'm heavily invested in this. I'm going to do a quick recap of what happened last episode. And then I'll just do a quick rundown of some of my theories. And then we'll jump right back in. So, in the last episode, we finished up introductions. Um, we learned a little bit about the world. About the Amaterasu uh, group and the Kanai Ward. But then, Yuma started to not feel well. He, um... So he left. He ended up passing out. But before that, he met... Our uh, Shinigami friend, who he apparently made a pact with, we don't know anything about that. Neither does he. He doesn't remember it at all, which makes sense. And um, yeah, we woke up and we started finding some bodies, five of them to be exact. It's seemingly, obviously, we'll get into my theories, but seemingly all five of the detectives have been all burnt up, so you can't even identify them except for certain, you know certain identifying characteristics that they still have on their person. We eventually made it to our destination where we were where we were captured by I guess they're technically the police force of the Kanai Ward, but I think they work for the uh, the Amaterasu group. And yeah, they, they think uh, Yuma, Yuma did it, which is, un which is understandable given the circumstances. And then right before the episode ended, um, Shinigami froze time she had a uh, magical girl transformation and turned into a sexy anime, a sexy anime girl. Of course, because of course she did. I was thinking about it. It's very Isomnium Files, right? You have where you have like the the AI ball, which is like this cute mascot, but then they all have <laughs> cute anime girl uh, versions as well. So that's kind of what Shinigami is. You have the cute little ghost mascot version, which I felt like an idiot because. Especially as somebody who's a big Death Note fan. She even call, called herself a Death God. I was trying to remember exactly what a Shinigami was. But of course, that's what Ryuk is. And all those, you know, creatures in uh, Death Note. They're Death Gods. So that's what Shinigami's supposed to be. A much cuter one, though. And that's where we left off. We're going into some some mystery labyrinth thing. I feel that's where we're going to probably take the clues we found and kind of deduce some things. I'm not sure. But there's a good place to left off with the game... I don't know if it's the end of the chapter or just the end of the section, but either way, I want to quickly run through some of my stuff. Some of it will just be re reiterating what I said last episode. I'll try and be brief. So like I said, I think considering all the bodies were burnt, I think that they were all switched up. If not all of them, some of them. Maybe some were left alone and others were, um, were, you know, to mess with the crime scene, some were swapped. I'm not sure exactly, but one of the things that's kind of obvious that I didn't notice immediately uh, in the last episode is that I made mention of you know the identifying features that were left on their bodies such as Poochie for example having her like you know her little hairpin and her headphones what's that what's the old guy's name Zange I think his name was had the uh he you know, still had his eye patch on if they ha if they were burnt alive with those things on them they would have either been completely burnt up or in very bad shape you know with like scorch marks on them and all messed up Poochie's little hairpin isn't going to survive if her whole body was burnt up. So it makes sense that they were burned, and then those effects were added later, which lends credence to the idea that, you know, that they were um, placed after they were killed, or after they were burned, anyway. One thing I was thinking about was Zilch, specifically. He was the first person we saw. He was also the only one that we saw 
post burning, if I remember that correctly, right? Like we we got a brief glimpse of him in the infirmary as it was being set on fire, and then you know then the whole place went up in smoke. We put it out, and then we saw the burnt body. Now I don't know if that could mean that Zilch was actually alive when we saw him. Maybe he was posing dead in the uh, bed, and then. In the, I don't know how this would have happened, but in the confusion, he maybe swapped himself with a burnt body and left. But I also think, I also think, if not that, I also think uh, Zilch might have actually been killed in the other infirmary because we saw, you know, we saw evidence of a burning in that in that room. But the bo no body was actually in there, so maybe he was burnt there and his body was just taken to the other infirmary. And then I already mentioned this last video that I think Afix was stabbed with the knife that's in Zilch's body. It might have been planted in Zilch after. What else do I have here? Oh, I want to talk about... Oh, what's her name? The, uh, the fashionista girl. Was it Melamy? I think that was it, right? I'm not 100% sure, though. I'll just call her the fashionista for now. I can't check my, uh, my, uh, guide. Um... So, they mentioned... I forget if they specifically mentioned the coffee, but when we were being questioned by the, you know, the big fat guy, the, uh, from, with the Amaterasu group, he had mentioned that you know his uh he had his uh his men drink drink something or some of the drinks. I think I think he mentioned the coffee, and they you know they they were drugged, they passed out. So I think Melamie is the reason we got sick. Like we we right, she offered the coffee. I don't remember if it was just to us specifically, but we went up, we took it. Zange even got a picture of it. That was meant to be just like oh I'm just showing you my powers, but I think it's much more than that. I think it was ac it was accidentally taken, but I think it captured an important moment um, of her, of you know of her, us drinking the coffee and you know and what's her face was in the picture uh, the fashionista. My two top suspects are her and Zilch. Let's put it that way for this whole incident. Let's see. I mentioned that I think the train car one and five might have been switched while I was, while I was thinking about this. I also thought maybe one of the cars, I guess the last car, car five. Maybe it wasn't attached to the train at all until until maybe we entered the tunnel, then it's somehow connected to the train. Yeah, that, I guess the, the last point regarding that before we get back into the game was I was thinking about... I feel like... So, I, so we have five bodies, right? And I'm thinking that one of the one of the detectives at least has to be alive. I really think that. You know? So that means that there has to have been a sixth body. And they all seem legit. Like, they all seem like they're real body. I don't think one of them's like a mannequin or something. Maybe. But so, I was wondering where that other body could have been. And why Poochie and, um, what's-his-face and, uh, Aphex, when they used their powers, couldn't sense it. I came up with two theories. Like I said, if the car... If one of the cars that maybe had the extra body in, whether they were dead yet or not, wasn't even attached to the train... That could be why they didn't sense it. Or, if the, let's say the train car was attached, you know, all the cars were attached to the train. That last body we found, that is supposedly Aphex's, was like as far at the end of the train as you could have gotten, right? Like it was in car 5, or what we think is car 5, all the way, like all the way at the nose of the train. And we know that Aphex's power can't reach as far as Poochie's. So, so maybe Aphex just didn't reach the body when he used his powers, and Poochie probably could reach uh, the end, the end of the train. But if the body, if the person was already dead, then she wouldn't have been able to sense it because there would be no heartbeat and no, um, you know, obviously no sound or anything. So I'm gonna leave it there. I think that's all my theories. I don't know how they connect. These, they're very disjointed at the moment, but. Well, I've almost been talking for 10 minutes. <laughs> As you can see, I have a lot to say. Um, but we're going to jump right back in. Because I'm really excited to solve this mystery. Hopefully I can finish it tonight. Even if it's a couple episodes. So let us continue. Here we are. Is this the Phantom World? Or whatever it's called. Okay, it's getting creepy. Ooh, I got a nice cape. And I'm chained up or something. <laughs> okay, he's not happy. Nice reflection there. 
Puddle, puddle uh, graphics. 10 out of 10. There she is. This is our Shinigami. What do you think of my awesome powers? This is what you obtained in exchange for your memories, Master. Okay. Uh, I don't regret it. Anymore. You did this, Shinigami? Is this why I made a pact with you? I don't understand any of this. Where are we? Yes, I need an explanation ASAP. Hmm. Simply put, it's an alternate universe. It's got that kind of vibe, right? An alternate universe. And you don't sound surprised. Come on, it's awesome. Um, I'll take your word for it. You probably think it's cliched, huh? Well, this isn't any old alternate universe. Okay, do tell. What kind of alternate universe is it? Check this out. Ta-da! This is the mystery labyrinth. It's a maze that materializes mysteries from the real world. What is it becoming a Persona game or something? <laughs> materializes mysteries? We're gonna have dungeons? Unsolved mysteries become lost to time, right? Well, here, they actually take shape as a mystery labyrinth. Okay. So far, they get an A in creativity. Now, this maze is the materialized form of the unsolved murders that took place on the Amaterasu Express. This maze is the mystery? Ooh, exciting. The power to interact with this mystery labyrinth. That's why we were able to come here in the first place. Anyway, Master, we're gonna beat the Amaterasu Express Massacre Mystery Labyrinth. What happens when we beat it? In every case, there's a hidden truth. And we have to find the truth deep inside this mystery labyrinth. So, if we beat this mystery labyrinth, the truth of that case will be revealed. Okay, sounds uh, simple enough. Naturally, so will the truth I'm excited to see what this sure. actually, now, from a gameplay perspective, how this will work. You will discover the killer's identity too? You couldn't solve it in reality, so we're solving it in this alternate universe. They're two sides of the same coin. But whether or not you discover the truth depends on the person entering the labyrinth. The more complex the mystery is in the real world, the more complex the maze will be too. Killers in real world cases throw whatever obstacles they can at investigators, right? True that. Those are also materialized into the maze, so this is gonna be a tough battle. I'm so ready for it. You're saying there are traps in there? Yep. Looks like you're finally getting it. Okay. Sweet. Now that I've explained it all, let's head into the dungeon. Yes, please. Hold on. I, I don't understand any of this. Seriously, you don't get it? Uh, a <laughs> Not yet. Mystery Labyrinth is a maze based on a real mystery. This one is formed from the murder on the Amaterasu Express. Yep, you're right so far. So, if there's always a hidden truth inside a mystery labyrinth, if we keep going, the Amaterasu Express case will be solved? Yep, you totally get it. Okay, now he's got to fill in the blanks. What? I don't <laughs> get anything! This makes no logical sense! Sheesh! This is why you're a bench warmer detective. Ooh, shots fired. Universe and hung up on details. Kind of important details. Because I think of something like I, the Somnium Files, where the gameplay mechanic of going to the dreams or whatever was super abstract. Like, that was also kind of like you're going into, like, a quote-unquote alternate world, you know, a dream world, where the same rules don't apply to the real world and things don't quite make sense logically. So I wonder if there'll be elements of that in this. Like, we're in, like, a completely different world here, so... But it'll still have to be somewhat logical, because we're actually solving a mystery here, whereas... Ah, uh, the Somnium Files, it wasn't like a murder mystery, uh, visual novel. It didn't... The gameplay didn't revolve around that. Of course I am! Okay, uh, I'll explain more about how it works as we explore the mystery labyrinth. Okay, sounds good. Along the way, stare at my boobs for eight seconds. Uh... One, two, three, four. Okay, no, I'm not doing that. I, I was just. That'll make all your worries disappear. <laughs> no, it won't. Please explain everything now. 
He hasn't hit puberty yet. It's okay. Maybe someday. Relax, relax. I'll tell you in due time. Come on, let's go. Time to unriddle this mystery labyrinth. Lead the way, Mademoiselle. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention the important keys. Oh, let's see. Keys? Okay. You mean for opening doors in the dungeon? Yeah, something like that. But keys in the mystery labyrinth are used to break through mysteries. Okay. They're called solution keys, and they're essential to clear the mystery labyrinth. So, where do I find them? Solution keys are materialized clues for a case. Normally, you'd get them during the investigation. You kind of had to rush through the investigation this time around, so let's briefly recap True. This. For starters, try to recall all that happened on board the Amaterasu Express. Trust me, that's all I've been thinking about today. I wonder if we'll get any kind of, um, like, uh, an evidence, uh, envelope or something. Like, truth bullets in Danganronpa. The Amaterasu Express? Uh... The Amaterasu Express is the only method of transportation in Kanai Ward. Okay, now it's time to pay extra close attention. It's an automated, unmanned train with five cars. Its doors won't open while in motion, and windows are fixed in place. Like, we couldn't get into, like, the very, very end or front of the car, right? Like, that was locked. So maybe there actually was somebody in there? But like I said, if it was a dead body, maybe it was just undetected. There were no stops before our destination, so the train kept moving until it arrived at the station. And I do think part of the mystery will revolve around the train itself. A monitor in the backup control room displays the operation log. And there was no record of the train stopping. Okay, I forgot about that. Oh, uh, come again? That was gross. You puked it out. <laughs> Thanks, I'm not touching that. A map of the train. Oh, oh, okay, so solution keys are like evidence then, I guess. See, that is, that is, the, 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 that is this game's truth bullets, I'm assuming. There we go. A route map of the Amaterasu Express. Okay, that'll be important. I definitely think the tunnel is important. According to the log, the train did not stop once after departure. Okay. So this is a solution key. But why did it come out of your mouth? Best not to ask questions. What do you mean? I don't have to use my hands. I worked really hard developing this method. Okay, say no more. You put thought into this? <laughs> so that's how words and events you think are clues get transformed into solution keys. Got it. Let's keep reviewing what happened in this case. All right, I'll do my best. This is so uh... cool. The incident occurred inside the Amaterasu Express while it was still moving. Including myself, there were six master detectives on board. Right. The effects and Poochie's abilities confirmed there were no other passengers on the train. I think something must have gotten by one or both of their abilities. Well, I guess both, it would have to be both of their abilities. That's my guess. Apex and Poochie's fortes proved there were no other passengers besides the six people inside the train car. And who died first again? Uh... It was Zilch, in the first car's infirmary. But do we know that? We saw him get burned, but how do we know that the other passengers weren't dead already? He's just the first body, the first one we came across. I noticed smoke pouring through the crack of the door, and looking through the window... I saw a knife stuck in Zilch's chest. Hmm. And again, I think we I think we saw Zilch before he was burned, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I pointed out that knife and how it's odd. Cause it doesn't look like the part of the bed sheet that's that isn't burned off, like the, it looks it doesn't look like it's completely burned up. The infirmary was on fire, so smoke quickly filled the whole area. I hurried to open the door, but it wouldn't budge because it was locked. Like, if we if we didn't see Zilch beforehand, I would have just thought that the fire was 
a red herring to make us think he was burned right then and there, but maybe he was burned the whole time, like, you know, long ago. Does that mean this was a locked room mystery? Yep. Not really. Oh. There's a chance the killer had a duplicate key. Mm, I guess. That's no fun. <laughs> Anyway, gotta love a good locked room mystery. And unlocks the door from the inside to enter the infirmary. By then, Zilch's corpse had burnt to a crisp. Yeah. So I'm trying to look at the picture. It's kind of, again, it's kind of hard to tell from this picture, but I think he might have been the only person whose you know quote unquote identifying feature, which is his glasses, are burnt up as well. Like, looking at the picture, he might just have black glasses, but looking at the picture, it looks like his glasses are burnt up, too. Everybody else's was in seemingly pristine condition. I wanted to alert the others, so I moved to the second car. But I found Melamy's corpse there. Melamy. I think she was set on fire with the liquor in the dining car. Right. And again, like, here, you can see her little, her, like, her eyelash, uh, whatever you call it, highlights. Those would have definitely been burnt off, you would think. Melanie's corpse, covered in car two, is burnt to a crisp, but the face is still barely recognizable. That reminds me, something was off about car two, right before the train entered the tunnel. There was a strange shaking. Isn't the hmm. train entering the tunnel? It's like air pressure, uh, wind stuff. I think something was happening with the train. Maybe cars were being moved. Maybe there's some weird thing where. Since since car one and five are like almost identical looking, is there some way that like car one can kind of become car five, or maybe like the train spun around? I don't know. And there was a blackout right after, although it only lasted a moment. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. What was up with that blackout? Was there one on the other side of the tunnel too? All I can say is I think there was some kind of trickery. No. When we exited the tunnel, there was shaking again, but no blackout. I know the train can go in two directions, so maybe it just changed directions. There was something else. Take, and that would have confused us. Something that happened when we were in the fourth car. Hmm. I wonder if that's a clue. There was a blackout and a shaking when the train car entered the tunnel. There was another shaking when the train exited the tunnel. And the next corpse was. Huh, intriguing. The girl in the third car? Yeah, it was Poochie. Another burnt body. Just like the f Oh, I'm sorry. Just like the first two cars. Gucci's corpse discovered in car three. It was burnt to a crisp, but the face is just barely recognizable. Oh yeah, wasn't there a secret face thing in the third car? You mean the backup control system? I remember something about that. And it was used, right? It was flickered on. The control system automatically manages the electricity within the train. So when the blackout occurred, could that somebody have maybe turned it off through this? When the main control system fails, it will switch to the backup system after one second. Maybe that's what the blackout was. Maybe that was the main control failing and it's switching to the backup. That might be what it was. You may have amnesia, but you've got a pretty good memory. Anything else you can remember? I did notice that the backup control system was actually operating. Right. And if the backup was on, that means the main system was down, right? It would have had to be. What do you think about that? I'm trying to remember where the main system is. Where's the, yeah, where's the main system in the in the train? I don't remember. The backup control system status was operating. Did the main control system fail? Well, the train never stopped, so it doesn't change the fact that no one could get in or out, right? I do love that they're giving us this little, uh... I don't know if it'll do this for every case, but I like that we're getting a, yeah, a recap. That's true. Next, you found the geezer's corpse in the fourth car, right? He was also covered in burns. Again, his camera thing looks like doesn't look like it's really damaged. It's kind of hard to tell. Maybe it is a little bit, but was there anything strange about that corpse? He didn't have any external wounds. That's the picture I was but talking about. Was both in the cell phone he uses for his photography ability. If they if they add that um that picture to the evidence, which I wouldn't be surprised if they do. I think that's because I think that's her drugging us with the coffee. Oh yeah, that useless ability. 
basically no better than a dash cam. <laughs> uh, poor, Z uh, poor Zange. Anyway, forget about the geezer for now. Don't want that old man smell haunting my memories. Zange is corpse discovered in car four. The entire body has been burned to a crisp. Okay, we are getting that. Zange's forte created this recorded image. It was saved in the cell phone found on his corpse. Next and last is the fifth car. Come on, try to remember it. The body it? we found in the fifth car was completely charred. That was Aphex. It was impossible to tell who it was. Yeah, see, I think this was the hardest to identify. Like, it looked... Comp so this... This might not have been Aphex. This might have been somebody else entirely. I don't know. But the necklace around the corpse's neck confirmed it was Aphex. We also discovered a stab wound to the chest. Right, which I think was done by the knife that was in Zilch. The burnt corpse, thought to belong to Aphex, had what appeared to be a stab wound in its chest. Also, judging by things like the plate on the wall, the fifth car appeared to be far more burnt than the other cars. Yeah, that is true. The room ended up like that because the victim was on fire and running around trying to put it out. <laughs> I don't know if this could have been like the origin point of the fire. But none of the other rooms are burnt like this at all, right? The plate identifying car 5 was burned and distorted in an unusual manner. Like I said, the fact that's no coincidence. And obvi obviously it's not because it's in my evidence. So I wonder if this is actually car 1, maybe. Oh, and the blood on the interior. I forgot all about that. Car's infirmary is an important clue, I think. Okay. Well, we know. Okay, we know. Oh, you know what that could mean? Oh. Aphex was stabbed. Oh! You know what it could mean? Maybe Aphex was stab was killed in the infirmary. Maybe he was stabbed. Stabbed and burned. And then they took his body. You know, so. Then they took his body out and put it where, it is, where we found it. Right? That would make sense. Or unless Aphex tried to escape and. He was all covered in blood, obviously, so maybe that's his blood, like, trying to get out of the infirmary. Something like that. But it would, it would make sense that maybe he was actually killed in the infirmary. The infirmary in car 5 was locked from the inside. There was a small amount of blood spattered on the interior lock. Uh-huh. So, I guess that does it for our review of the case? Or Zilch, if he actually was stabbed. Oh, I think so. There was something else. After the train arrived at the station. Do tell, do tell. According to the peacekeeper's report, they all burned to death. Hmm. But that part seems off to me. Yeah, like I said, Zilch and Aphex have the stab stabby stab wound. I feel like I feel like that happened first. The victims all burnt to death, according to the peacekeeper's report. And they also mentioned there was a knockout drug mixed into the drinks in the dining car. Yep, yep, I think that's... It's showing a picture of the coffee, I think... That was Melamy's doing. There was a knockout drug mixed into the drinks in the dining car. Yeah, I think that's everything of note. Which makes Melamy super duper suspicious. Probably the most suspicious. Uh, okay. What a big Thanks for that. This should be enough solution keys to solve it. But... I still don't know how to use them. Master, you worry too much. I'm sure it'll turn out fine. If you say so. are important to solving mysteries. Yours truly is important too. Ah, thank you. You're probably talking about yourself though. A solution key is a manifestation of clues related to a case. You can acquire or update one by investigating the case and moving the story along. Sure hope you got all that down. Acquired solution keys can be viewed in the notebook menu. Try checking one out if a mystery labyrinth becomes too difficult to solve. There's bound to be some useful info. That's short for information. <laughs> like, no shit. Labyrinth skills are abilities that can help you clear mystery labyrinths. Okay, that's where the skill points come in. Acquire them by spending skill points, SP, which you get when your detective rank increases. Hey, Master, do you need a power up? Did not think I'd be seeing a skill tree in this game, but. Go off. Labyrinth skills can be checked and acquired in the ability section of the notebook menu. Set whichever skills suit you best. You can activate labyrinth skills by setting them, but it requires memory cost, so pay attention to how much you have left. Okay. Time to head off in search of the truth. Yes. Let's 
solved this thing. It's what I've been waiting for. Will things really turn out fine? I hope so, Ayuma. I hope so. Here we go. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. Very colorful. So, this is the mystery labyrinth. It sure looks creepy. Look at all the pretty colors. Hey, if we keep going, will we really get to the truth? Come on, would I lie to you? That's yet to be seen. I told you the deepest part of the labyrinth holds the truth, right? So, let's go. Hey, I'm, I'm trusting you. Right now. I, I am too. For, for mysteries, I mean. You're... what? <laughs> My innocent little boy. Playable loop. There are places in the mystery labyrinth where the path just goes on and on. You can't move on until the scene plays out, so keep following the path until it does. I don't know what that means, but we'll figure it out. Okay, this is very cool. So let's keep... Okay, wait. Quickly? You definitely want to okay. This. Uh, yes, I already know. You can view... Yes, I know. Okay, we don't have to go through them all again. Obviously, we just went through them. I just want to see. Um, let's go to abilities. Check the master status as well as acquire and set labyrinth skills. Okay, we did this already. Thank you. So this is my I'm detective rank five. Okay, that's the memory cap. Stamina, strength evasion. Don't tell me this is really a. Uh, Whatchamacallit? Like a, uh, an RPG type thing. Is it like actual battles? Okay, well, let's increase stamina by 100. I guess this is all I can get at the moment. Oh, my memory cap equipped the skill? I guess. Okay, let's see. Increase stamina by 150. In Shinigami puzzle sequences, remove one solution key. Shinigami will Shinigami will barf up. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what any of these. I'm assuming these are mini games or something. In reasoning deathmatch sequences, shorten the assist ability's recovery time. Uh, I say we just go with this first. Okay, let's see. Okay, that takes two. Let's not do that yet. Okay, I don't know what these mini games are. Let's just do them though. I'm gonna do this one and this one. Okay, so I don't have any more SP, so I can't get any more, and I can't equip any more anyway. Okay. So we'll see if that helps me in any way. Okay, let's... We haven't read these yet. She likes Yuma, dislikes boredom, a death god, and abilities of the mystery labyrinth interaction. A death god contracted to haunt Yuma, only visible to Yuma. Shinigami is constantly floating and bobbing along at his side. Though cheerful and chatty, this death god's sense of morality is quite far removed from that of humans. Okay, same Okay, same character. Shinigami's true form. Her personality is no different from when she's in her spirit form, so she continues to enjoy teasing Yuma. She can open a path to the Mystery Labyrinth, which is the manifestation of mysteries from the real world. She has many special abilities inside the Mystery Labyrinth that can aid Yuma in solving it. Okay, you guys are all dead. And then we got Mr. Swank over here. He likes fatty sirloin steak, I don't doubt it. Just likes fish. Whoops, sorry. I love fish. He's a peacekeeper and his talent is speed eating. Okay. A member of the Amaterasu Corporation Peacekeepers. He loves money almost as much as he loves eating. He laughs at the misfortunes of others and abuses his authority to get his way. Condescending and prideful, he is merciless toward those who defy him. I believe it. 
Okay, that wasn't too bad. We got the the corporation, the mega corporation controlling Kanai Ward. It deals in a wide variety of goods such as industrial products, electronic appliances, and pharmaceuticals. All of which can be found across all aspects of daily life. And then the Keith Peacekeepers, the Department of Amaterasu Corporation. They serve as a sort of police force within Kanai Ward. Again, okay, these are just, uh, what do you call it? Tutorials. Okay, um, let's just continue. Uh, okay. So it told me to just keep running forward, right? Until something happens. I don't know. Okay, there we go. Hey, did something move just now? Oh, that's a cue. Okay, what does that mean? Cue? Is that a monster living in the mystery labyrinth? They're not exactly monsters. You are part of the mystery labyrinth itself. They're what materialize the mysteries. Okay. You have no intelligence or autonomy. All they do is manifest the mysteries in the labyrinths. Since you are here to defeat mysteries, they're kind of like obstacles. So in other words, they're the enemy. I have to fight them? Of course. As a detective seeking the truth, mysteries are your greatest enemy. I think this really might be like a dungeon. In like an RPG. Oh. Okay, this changed. I'm waiting for something to happen, though. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Oh, here's one of them. What is that? Very creepy looking mofo. Hey, it's Swank. In his demon form. What the? There are monsters here. That's a mystery phantom. A mystery phantom? What so a monster. <laughs> I told you that I didn't sign up for this. Materialize, right? Technically he did sign up for this. Well, if there's someone in the real world trying to interfere with the case, that person also materializes. Oh. That would be him. A mystery phantom. Interfering with the case? Fascinating. Hey, doesn't he kind of look like Swank of the Peacekeepers? Yeah. If, the peacekeepers are if you were a rock god. Then maybe this incident has something to do with Amaterasu Corporation. That was what Melamy had suggested. You. You're the culprit. I'm not though. Huh? At least I don't think I am. Oh, he's getting bigger. Okay, so this turned into like a stadium. All the other passengers on the train are dead. You're the only one who could have done the crime. So you're the culprit. That's the truth behind this case. Master, he's trying to frame you to bury the case. If you can't get past this, you can't reach the truth. What do I do? Should I just run away? Should I kill him? A detective doesn't run from a mystery. You gotta defeat him. Defeat oh. him? How? That's an option. Master, are you ready to give your life for the truth? <laughs> huh? Yes. He's Just not, but I am. I am. I, I am. <laughs> oh, hello. I don't think Yuma's little heart can take all this. Hello. Very sensual. And jiggly. <gasps> what is happening? Oh. <laughs> Look at that. 
We got a weapon and everything. What? A sword? I will save you, madam. I call it the solution blade. It's a sword with special powers to affect things inside the mystery labyrinth. Can I just kill him with it? Use that to boom kill the mystery phantom. Let's do this. Whoa, slow down. Uh, how do I use this? Sure I've never used one of these before. Anyway, the damage you take here is nothing to sniff at. It's not like an injury in the real world, but still, the more and more I can take him. Realizes you've been hurt here. Oh boy, you'll wind up brain dead. It'll be game over. Time to start from the beginning again. Hmm. I don't like that. No one wants that. So you better be super careful. Come on, pay attention. Okay, here we go. Stamina. Traps and obstacles lie in wait inside the mystery labyrinth. Make a mistake while facing them and master stamina will decrease. Dead, it's game over when the stamina runs out, so be careful as you uncover the truth. Oh boy. I'm excited though. What's happening? Okay, here we go. Reasoning death match. I'll tell you a mystery labyrinth secret. Okay, during the reasoning death match, RDM, a mystery phantom will attack master while making statements about the case. Oh my gosh. This well, let's continue. Dodge, dodge, death, death. Getting hit by a statement means taking damage, so move up, down, left and right to avoid it. Track it carefully and dodge. On, if you dodge a statement at the very last second, it becomes a daring dodge. The more daring dodges you make, the bigger the bonus you'll get later. So give it a shot if you got the guts. I'll try. The bonus for successful daring dodges is based on the max amount you can dodge in one cycle. Basically, there's a cap on how much you can get. Don't okay. Any shady statements slip by. Inflammable statements give you a chance to counterattack. Statements might contain a contradiction. Slash through it with the solution blade and fight back against the phantoms. Ooh boy. In Danganronpa, you can kind of just sit back and listen until you see these. But so I have to dodge the statements while I listen to what's being said at the same time. Okay. Oh, and this is X to a butt. To expose the contradiction, you gotta pick the right solution key. Okay. You gotta, you gotta pick the right solution key. The key's already set in the solution blade this time. To find the contradictory and inflammable statement and slash it. If you slash a statement containing a con contradiction with the right solution key, you'll destroy it and damage the mystery phantom. Oh. Picking the wrong solution key or missing the timing means taking damage. Just some friendly advice from yours truly. I think I got all that. So dodge the statements. Um, it's it, it said that the the proper uh, solution key is already loaded, so I just have to press X to rebut the inflammatory statement. I'm guessing since it's the first one, it probably will only have one weak statement. Okay. No need to draw this out. You're the culprit behind this case. Ow. You murdered five bastard detectives. That's the only explanation. Everyone else is dead. You're the only one who could have done the crime. Oh. Okay, I think that this is the only one that's available, so... I wasn't even... I wasn't even okay, I'll admit, I wasn't even paying attention. I'm just gonna go for it. He's saying I'm the only one who could have done the crime? Let's see if this works. Nope. What do I do? He's treating me like I'm the culprit. What should I do? You have to prove you're not, Master. Look for a clue in the solution keys. Or uh, uh, something that proves I'm not the culprit. No need to draw this out. Okay, no need to draw this out. Oh shoot. This case. You murdered five bastard detectives. Not true. Okay, we'll jump. Everyone else is dead. That way? There we go. That was cool. Okay, I got it. Okay, it's gonna take some getting used to. There's no way 
I could have done it. I wasn't conscious the whole time because I drank the drugged coffee in the dining car. Right. It's no use. Your deduction is wrong. Lies. Okay, we're gonna keep going now. Testimonies of two detectives and photography image. Okay. So X is rebut. Okay, and then Y, I can look at my solution keys. That's what I did before. I accidentally pressed Y instead of X. Okay, and then ZL is uh, switching the solution keys. Okay. Like I said before, I don't play my Switch much, so part of it is overcoming the controls a little bit. Looks like there are more solution keys to choose from. The number of keys will change between RDMs. Use the correct key and slash the contradiction in the inflammable statement. I already mentioned this, but attacking with the wrong solution key means taking damage, so be careful. Let me just take a look at them. Okay, yeah, this is Aphex and Pucci uh, using their forte to prove there are no other passengers. Okay, it's kind of it's gonna be the photography image, I'm sure. Ridiculous! You're the culprit. Lies. You knew it was drunk. That's how you avoided being knocked out. The other detectives were drugged. Okay. Oh shoot. Took the laced copy. And only pretended to drink it. Nope. Yep, I did not pretend. There's a picture of me drinking it. This is creative. It's kinda cool. Showed me drinking the coffee. That proves I wasn't faking anything. And again, who was the one who offered me the coffee? We haven't gotten there yet. Oh, he's done. He's done for. Okay, so that, that there were definitely a lot of similarities, you know, to a, uh, a non-stop debate from Dong and Wampa there. Did I defeat it? That was cool. I can't wait to see what the other mini games are like. See, no matter how weak you are, things will turn out fine as long as I'm here. Okay, he didn't he didn't do much, but Raimi is the culprit. Guess that's what Amaterasu Corp is doing. They want to set you up and call it a day. Hmm. That's why the peacekeepers barged in as soon as the train hit the station. They probably planned this. Okay, interesting. So they knew what was going to happen. Then the culprit works for Amaterasu? Or someone hired by them. Either way, the peacekeepers want to hide who did it. So you think one of the detectives who was on the train was one of the peacemakers or peacekeepers? Again, I, I can't help but think it could be something like that, but I can't help but think that one of our detective friends from the train is still alive. So the reason Control Headquarters didn't respond to the emergency calls was because of Amaterasu. Probably. Now that we know what they're aiming for, they're one step closer to the truth. Let's keep this up and unriddle this mystery labyrinth so we can get to the truth. Yes. Gravely casual about this. My life is at stake <laughs> here. Let's keep going. I understand now that the mystery labyrinth is the case's mysteries get in shape. Oh, that's why I gotta press forward. Here, Shinigami. Simply put, I'm the one and only cutie that can directly interact with the mystery labyrinth. And then there to annoy you. Progress you've made in the mystery labyrinth and solving those mysteries here. It's all thanks to me. How are you able to do this? I don't know what to tell you. I've always been able to do this, so I forgot how. <laughs> More importantly, if it's I just a feature. Out, you are so pitiful, Master. Yeah, I probably should have been uh, wary of that. No wonder you're wobbling around like a toddler. Yeah, I would not have taken a drink from a stranger. I thought I was dizzy because I've got this weird ghost thing haunting me. That's what it appeared to huh? be. Making a pact with me won't make you dizzy. That's not it the point. It reduces your lifespan by a lot. 
You're kidding, right? Don't think so. <laughs> right? Anyway, who do you think is the culprit, Master? Do you have any guesses? <sighs> it's either Zilch or, like I said, Melamie. Um, if the drinks were drugs in the dining car, the culprit must have been on the train before anyone else. I mean, that's fair. That makes oh, sense. So then all you have to do is ask around and figure out what order everyone got on board. How do we ask people? Oh, wait a minute. You can't! Yeah, exactly. You That's a problem. Taking this very seriously, are you? She's having a blast. Oh, okay, we're getting to a new hallway. Something's gonna happen here. A door. This place. Whoa. The path is forked in two. Which way should I go? This fork in the path is also a materialized mystery. So you should know which way to go if you solve it. First, let's clarify what mystery this is exactly. Okay. Uh, how do you do that? Like this. Oh, that's a cool scythe. Do you see, do you see the gleam in her eye? Okay. Blood, Who's... Blood. What did you do to me? <laughs> it's fine. Slitting your throat does absolutely nothing to you in this world. I'll use the blood of the truth seeker as a conduit to expose the mystery blocking the path. Okay. Is that a question? Is the culprit one of the six on the train? That's the mystery standing in your way. You just need to pick the right path and head on through. I really think it is. Six on the train. It must mean the six master detectives, including me, right? If I don't think this gotta be is among the six on the train, then I should take the right path, which says no. But if I think the culprit is one of the six on board, I need to take the left path that says yes. I mean, if it's a no, that turns everything on its head, because I've... I'm almost positive. Like, I've been under that assumption with all my... logic and reasoning that I've been doing. <laughs> Questions relating to the case are asked in different forms inside the mystery labyrinth. Choose the correct answers and take me to the truth. Is the culprit one of the six on the train? What do you have to say? Was the culprit among the six people or not? Master. Pick the door you think is right. Time to see if your deductions are up to snuff, master. Okay. So I'm going to go with yes. Is the culprit one of the six on the train? Yes. That's the press. So you think the culprit is one of the six on the train, right? Yes, I do. Please be right. Right here. Okay, let's go. I wonder what happens if we choose the wrong path. Can I go through now? Did we do good? Oh, you got it right? Not yes. bad at all, Master. Okay, so at least I was right about that. Oh, look who's back. Ah, something happened. Why? Did I make the wrong choice? I don't think so. It's trying to bury the truth again. Go get him, Master. Oh boy. Here we go again. Take two. In this corner. Swink, skanky swanky, I'll call him. Okay. The map and the testimonies. Okay, so okay, we know that one. And then map of the train. Um, well, we'll see where it goes. 
How do I? I just want to leave. Okay, wait. There we go. You must have had an accomplice. Uh. You two committed the crime. In that case, it all fits. Okay, so an accomplice. Even it couldn't do it alone. It was possible with an accomplice. You created an alibi for yourself. By drinking the coffee and knocking yourself out. Okay, let me think. So he mentioned an accomplice and take and drinking the coffee and knocking myself out. If there was an accomplice, a murder could happen even while the culprit slept. Oh no no no. That's that's where the powers come in. An accomplice, then there was someone else on the train besides the six of us. Okay, so So it's the uh it's this one. Yeah. Oh hang on. Okay. Yeah, select that one. So there's no accomplice. Other than the six on the train. You must have had an accomplice. No, sir. I love that. <laughs> no, that's wrong. Two master detectives used their abilities to prove that only six people were on the train. It does take some getting used to, like I said, it's hard to, like, focus on, like, the dodging and pay attention to what's happening. If it was only one person, they could have been lying or been an imposter. But two of them means there can be no mistake. Yeah. Wrong! Your reasoning is completely off! Do tell. Peacekeeper death report operation log. The victims all burned to death. According to the log, the train did not stop once. Yeah, it's gonna be this. It is extremely unlikely that someone boarded the train while it was in motion. What good does that testimony even do? Your accomplice just wasn't there when those two checked. They came aboard after that. It can't be that. So what if the windows don't open? While everyone was knocked out, you secretly stopped the train. Let your partner nope, not possible, buddy. Nice try, though. The backup control room's operation log showed that the train never stopped, and the doors won't open unless the train stops. So it's impossible for someone to have gotten on during the trip. Is that it? Ha! Oh, this is so fun. So fun. Okay, got through round two with that guy. Looks like you're getting the hang of this, Master. You've learned to ruthlessly cut down any who stand in your way. I can see how the dodging can get really intense and hard as the game goes on, too. But it's fun. You make it sound like I'm the bad guy here. Shall we keep going? I was wondering, if the mystery labyrinth is trying to block people from seeking the truth, wouldn't it reject my answers, even if they're right? Or, maybe the questions themselves could be lies. True. Fair question. No chance. A mystery labyrinth has no self-will. It can't lie, or create things not based on the real-world mystery. Okay, so it has its own kind of rules that it has to follow. This place is a direct manifestation of a mystery. You can always progress as long as you keep solving it. Okay, that's good to know. And I'm assuming it'll keep operating that way. In that sense, the labyrinth is fair. It won't cheat you. I see. That's a relief. Yeah. By the way, about the culprit being one of the six of you, how could the culprit commit the crime when all the other passengers besides you were dead? That, I'm not sure yet. Uh, 
Okay, we almost there. Ooh, we're getting there. What's this? This is a cool door. Saving. Another fork in the road. This is how we reach the truth. It reflects how problems are really solved, doesn't it? Okay. Well, I don't know if I've ever actually solved a mystery on my own. I don't remember it all. Mm. What's the matter? You just need to solve the mystery in front of us. Okay, another... Ow! Say. This game, you just... Sorry, this time, yours truly is going to help think it through. Okay, so wait, everyone was dead, so how did the culpa pull it off? You just leave all the heavy lifting to your lovely mystery labyrinth guide. Yeah. Really? That'd be a big help. Okay. Commit suicide after the crime or played dead. I mean, the fact that you're standing in front of that door, is that what you mean by you'll help me? I think it could be that. That's what I was saying. In fact, I specifically said that with Zilch. That when we saw him at the beginning, that, that might have been really him. But he might not have been dead when we saw him at the very beginning of the investigation. So, based... I've already... Uh, that's the theory I'm going to go with. I don't think it's the suicide thing. Come on. I'm still thinking here. Don't choose yet. Uh, okay. Oh, uh... I guess I'll think about the opposite door. Okay, well, fine then. Oh, I got it. Okay, I'm coming. Master, leave this to me. This has to be the right answer. Follow me. Uh. Wait. Ow. Okay, I guess I don't have a choice in the matter. I mean, that's what I was thinking. Because if they did commit suicide after the crime, they'd be dead right now. And that's right. No fun at all. <laughs> that's your reasoning? That's your reasoning? <laughs> exactly. Wait, what's this chain? <laughs> You're my dog now. Lick my boots, biatch. I told you we share mind and body. The chain is proof of that. Our relationship can never be broken apart. That's terrible. Please. She's enjoying Please. herself very much. Lucky. You're being haunted by a cutie like me. I'll say I'm all in on Shinigami because I'm I'm just as excited about this. Oh. I'm so tired. I pulled you up here so you can walk the rest of the way yourself. Okay. I didn't ask you to do that. I wonder if that was an example of the game just going easy on me. So you think this path will lead toward the truth? Right? Since this is my first investigation. Oh, or deduction. Yeah. This is a labyrinth. It's pretty common to encounter dead ends. Oh. That's lovely. We have, I don't think we've encountered one yet. Whoa, watch out! There we go. <laughs> you see? What did I tell you? Dead end. Don't sound so proud of yourself. You chose this path, Shinigami. True. Hmm. If it's a dead end, maybe the culprit wasn't just playing dead. I searched all five bodies, and they were, without a doubt, dead. Oh, so the answer isn't play dead. Let's turn back. You changed your mind already? Oh, interesting. Maybe this is maybe this is just showing me what happens if the answer is wrong. Exploring all possibilities is an important part of beating a mystery labyrinth. <laughs> oh, so awesome. <sighs> okay, the well. Way, I did say I can guide you through the mystery labyrinth. But I'm not that good at solving mysteries. <laughs> you could have said that a little earlier. I'm such a silly head. I just wanna help. I like when you rely on me, Master. 
Anyway, what's going on in the real worlds while we're in the mystery labyrinth? Time has stopped on the other side. We're sort of set apart from the normal flow of time while we're here. In other words, you're still surrounded by peacekeepers. Okay, so we can we can solve the mystery at our own pace. And then when we get back to the real world, time resumes and we can present our case. So if we return without solving the mystery, we'll just be captured. Yeah, so it's kind of urgent. As a result, this murder case will remain unsolved and linger in people's memories as a serious crime. Naturally, this mystery labyrinth will also survive. Mm. And that creates an even bigger problem. Which is? Leaving a case unsolved means that it will go down in history that way. Ooh. Yeah. The more bizarre a mystery is, the more it attracts people's interest. And the more people rack their brains about that mystery, the bigger the mystery labyrinth gets. Eventually, this is the definitely a wacky one. Would gain enough power to start affecting the real world. It would implant and uh, ooh, that's not good. into people's minds, creating more murderers and, in turn, new mystery labyrinths. Labyrinths can create endless cycles. That's why it's best to cut it off as soon as possible. It sounds way more daunting than I thought. Yeah. I didn't realize that one affected the others, like, literally. Oh well, at least we got some more info. Ah, we're finally back. The other route is commit suicide after the crime. There's no other option, so it has to be the right answer. Okay, so like I said... It definitely turns everything on its head, because that's not where I was, that's not what I was thinking at all. Hmm. Let's solve this thing. You should already know the answer. Now get to it. Okay, guess we're going here. <laughs> it's not even gonna ask me. It's just like, yep, just go on through. Careful. So is that all that happens in um, if you choose the wrong answer? Like, you just reach a dead end and then you just turn back? Okay, let's, let's go. Suicide after the crime would mean. And who would have done that? Four, the culprit killed themselves, right? Is that really the right answer? Okay, let me just pause for a moment. Oh, sorry. So it still could be Zilch, then. Maybe he just burned himself? Like, because we saw that... Like, we, we kind of we thought that Zilch was the first to die. Like I said, if all the others were dead, maybe Zilch was the last to die. Prince roots represent logical deduction. If there's only one root, then it's the only possibility. Okay. I think the only option left is the culprit off himself. We just need to find that suicidal pest. Okay, I definitely was not thinking along those lines at all, so. And then the question is why? Uh oh. Oh! What's going on here? Are we about to have a train cart minigame? This is part of the mystery materializing. You just need to solve it! Oh, am I gonna have to? Am I gonna have to? Am I gonna have to pick paths? Okay, I'm on it. I'm concentrating. Who was the last person to die during this incident? The culprit. committed suicide after the crime then the last person that died should be the culprit right right because they wouldn't be able to kill someone else if they off themselves already nice work thank you come on let's try again who set fire to the dead culprit themselves the culprit right if it's suicide it would have to be the culprit the person who started the fires must be the culprit. All five burned to death, so the culprit who died last totally burned himself. Okay, we're on to something. Who was the last person to be burned to death? I think Zilch. Is he an option? I'm gonna go with Zilch. One burned the other four, then set them 
himself on fire. His zilch. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we already have our guy. But you know, setting aside the idea that the culprit was the last to die, why would it be Detective Four Eyes? Because Didn't he discover his body first. All the other people were dead. The peacekeepers, the victims all burned to death, right? But when we first found Zilch in Car One, he wasn't burned, wasn't burned yet. Burned. Exactly. If that's the case, that means he must have burned to death after that. Right. Everybody else was burned already. Although, yeah. Everyone else we found after him had already died from burns. All right. So if they all burned to death, then the last one who died could be Detective Four Eyes. Okay, that sounds I right. Think the culprit killed everyone in the opposite order of how we found their corpses. Yeah. Okay, that would make sense. Right. So that would make sense if he came from one. Oh, and that would make sense. That's why that last car was. Was uh, so heavily burned because that's like the origin of the fire, I guess. Starting Maybe from car five, he killed them in order one by one. Yeah. And set himself on fire in car one. Was the whole point of this to in, to intentionally frame us? Because that's wild, if so. Otherwise, he would have killed us too. I would think. So Detective Four Eyes is without a doubt the culprit. But he committed suicide, huh? Hmm. Don't have a motive for any of this. The door. Okay, I'm doing pretty well so far. I love logic mini games. Made it. It worked. I told you it would be fine. I'm such a terrific guide. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. That's a cool- the goal Is already? That the end of it? I guess that's everything. Seems easier than I thought. Again, this is like the, uh, the prologue chapter, so I have a feeling that future cases will get more involved, but this has still been a blast. What's wrong, Master? I'm wondering if that's really all that happened. Something about this seems off. It does? You think so? Oh. Ah, what's going on? Do you have to make another choice? Zilch killed the other four, the then set fire to himself. Is this the truth behind the case? 